Today, the credit impulse died some more. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, working the latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Reserve Bank of Australia released their financial aggregates to November 2019 today. It's actually a little early, it's not at the end of the month, but of course, because of Christmas, they released them early. And well, frankly, the news was not great. On a monthly basis, total credit grew just 0.1% in November 2019, which is the same as October. Housing credit grew 0.2% in the month. Personal credit fell 0.5% over the month. And business credit rose 0.2% in the month, while broad money rose 0.3%. Now that's pretty anemic, and it means that total credit grew over the last year just 2.3% compared with 4.4% a year ago. Housing credit grew 2.9% over the year, compared with 4.9% last year. Personal credit fell 4.9% over the year, compared with 1.7% last year. And business credit rose 2.5% compared with 4.4% last year. So across the board, you can see that overall credit is back. Although interestingly, broad money is at 4.4% in November 2019, compared with 1.8% a year ago. So there's something funny going on here. Now, I want to go into these numbers in some more detail, but before I do that, let me just go through the various points that the Reserve Bank makes, because it's important to understand the context of this data. They say all growth rates for the financial aggregates are seasonally adjusted and adjusted for the effects of breaks in the series as recorded in the notes in the tables below. Data for the levels of financial aggregates are not adjusted for series breaks, and growth rates should not be calculated from data on the levels of credit. Historic levels and growth rates for the financial aggregates have been revised owing to the resubmission of data by some financial intermediaries, the re-estimation of seasonal factors, and the incorporation of securitization data. The RBA credit aggregates measure credit provided by financial institutions operating domestically. They do not capture cross-border or non-intermediated lending. And of course, they also make the point that since July 2019, the financial aggregates have incorporated an improved conceptual framework and a new set of data collection. And this is referred to as the Economic and Financial Statistics, the EFS series. And we've discussed that in previous posts. So it's possible that some of the changes in the data relate to some of the resetting that's gone on. But the RBA does make the point that they've corrected for these changes in the growth rate series, which we're discussing now. So we can look through the changes they've made to the underlying sequence of data. And it's a doozy. So to help unpick this, let's look at the trends over time. And the first one we're going to look at is the annual credit aggregates to November 2019. And their housing is now down to 2.9%. That's the lowest it's been for an awful long time. And you can see that the sequence was sitting between 6 and 8% right the way through until May 2018. And it's now falling steadily below that. Owner occupied housing is at 4.7%, and that's pretty much as low as it's been. In fact, if you go back to 2015, it was just slightly above that, but it ran up to more than 8% in 2016, and it was still at 8% in 2018. And it continues to ease down, despite the fact that we've had a greater improvement in first time buyer transactions. Property investment is now at minus 0.3% over the last year and continues to go south. 
And again, if you look back to 2015, we had growth rates of more than 10% on an annualised basis. It dipped down back in 2016 to 2%, came up again in 2017, and has been falling ever since. Personal credit is down 4.9% annualised, and you can see there the steady progression from growth rates of more than 1% back in 2015. And it's been shrinking since November 2015. And in fact, the rate of decline has increased. And you can also see that business growth is now at 2.5%. And this is a bit of a noisy series, but in fact, back in 2016, you can see that we were at 7%. Then it drifted lower, then sideways, then slightly up to reach a peak in January 2019 before easing away. And this is a reflection of poor levels of business confidence. So overall, wherever you look, the credit momentum is easing. And just to be clear, credit momentum is critical because it's the rate of change of credit growth. And if that is negative it means that home prices will go negative. And this is one reason why I continue to believe that the current assumed rise in home prices that is oft reported is not telling the full story. Now, we can also look at total credit. And you can see that that is now sitting at 2.3%. And that is very, very low indeed. If you go back to 2016, it was sitting at more than 6% but it's been declining ever since. And of course, this is going to put huge pressure on the banks because without this growth in credit, their profitability is frankly in shreds. And broad money is rising at 4.4% annualised. And it's not totally clear to me why this is. I suspect some of this is to do with the high level of exports of commodities and therefore the large receipts that we're receiving at the moment. And it may also be that the RBA is a little more active in the markets than previously under the repo arrangements, but it's hard to know. We'll be keeping an eye on broad money ahead. Now, some people may say, well, if you take a 12-month annualised view, then you're masking recent changes. So now let's look at the three-month rolling basis using the same credit aggregates to November 2019. And housing growth overall is sitting at 0.7% and is as still as low as it's been for some time. Owner-occupied housing did take a run-up post the election, but it is now sliding back, and that's consistent with our loan flow data that we've reported recently. And property investment lending is minus 0.2% on a three-month rolling basis, and that is still in negative territory, and there's little evidence of anything changing soon. Personal credit is also lower, minus 1.8%. And even business credit is sitting at 0.5%. It did peak a little earlier, but now it's falling back again. And again, we see that at the end of last year, it was quite a lot higher. So there is no evidence, even on a three-month view, of anything other than credit easing. But if you really want to go to the more extreme views, the more noisy views, then we can look at the monthly credit aggregates, which the RBA also kindly provides. And there you can see that housing is down this month, that owner-occupied housing is down this month, that the rate of growth of investment housing is down this month, that personal credit is a little up but still in negative territory and still sitting at minus 0.5%. And business credit is sitting at 0.25 for the month and is down from where it was a couple of months back. Again, this series is very noisy, so you can't draw too many conclusions from the monthly data, but whichever way you look at it, whether you look annually, quarterly or monthly, the truth is, Credit momentum continues to ease, and that's a reflection of lack of confidence amongst consumers and also amongst the business community. And underscores again why I think that home price growth 
is being overstated at the moment. Now there's another way we can look at it and that is let's look over the longer term trend. Now this is the rolling credit growth number on a 12 month basis all the way back to 1991. And this is a really interesting series to watch. We're looking here at both credit for owner occupied and credit for investment purposes, the yellow being for investment purposes. And you can see that there was consistent activity through 1991 up to 2001. There was a bit of a wobble around 1993, 1995, and that's to do with the recession we had to have. And interestingly, we can see that owner occupied housing didn't really grow as fast initially as investment housing, but eventually the two started traveling more closely together. And in fact, through the early 2000s, before the global financial crisis, things were looking quite good. And then there was a bit of a dive, and that is absolutely to do with the global financial crisis. And since then, the trajectory for credit growth has been languishing somewhat right the way through 2013. It did pick up in 2014 and 15, particularly investment. But then the changes to the rules came in and there was also some reclassification of loans. So the investment momentum eased. And we can see that as we come up to date, both investment and owner occupied lending is as low as it's been right the way across that series. So it's really important to understand the significance of these long term charts. We have entered a completely different phase in credit growth. And that suggests to me that it is very unlikely that we're going to see this turn around anytime soon. Finally, let me just look at total credit rolling 12 months again from 1997. So in the first part of the journey from 1997 through to 1993, you can see that credit growth was knocking around between 15 and 20 percent, but then it started to fall. It dropped to around 7 percent. But then it recovered quite quickly and continued on its merry way with annual rates even as high as 25 percent before it collapsed in 1991-1992, the recession we had to have. From then, it started to recover quite quickly and we saw growth rates of 10% up towards 14-13% and continuing forward through to 2000 and beyond. And the growth rate through the early 2000s was also reasonably strong. In fact, 2004, 2005, 2006 were around 15%. And then, of course, we started to move into uncertain territory and the global financial crisis hit. And of course, there was a significant fall um, close to zero, but not quite to zero. And then we started to recover. And so total credit started to move up again. Up towards 5% and above. But then ultimately it started to slide and we're now seeing total credit diving to be, well, extremely low, just a little above 2%. So again, it's really important to understand the significance of where we currently are in this long term cycle because it shows, I think, that total credit is also off the boil. And this is one of the reasons why I continue to believe that our economy is going to struggle ahead, because actually strong credit growth has been the mechanism that has supported the economy for a long, long time. And now this seems to be, frankly, wilting. So in conclusion, let me underscore once again that currently credit momentum is extremely weak. It's weak across the board, households and businesses. And given the current economic backcloth that we now find ourselves in, I think there's little chance of this turning around anytime soon, which is one reason why I still hold the view that it's more likely than not that in 2020 we'll see home prices slide rather than recover more. But 
We'll see. Maybe we will see more government intervention, more unnatural acts to try and keep the credit balloon running. But at the moment, it is purely out of air. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.